Hello, my name is Laura Innes. I'm one of the co-hosts on paperwingspodcast.com. Today I'm going to show you my process for lettering my comic, The Dreamer, using a program called Comic Life. I have my file opened here for the next page in my webcomic. As you can see, I don't have final art done yet. I do all of my lettering during the rough stage of my comic. So this page here is full size for print. So when I go to send my graphic novel off to the publisher, it's already set up. Everything is within the proper guidelines for print and I won't have to make any changes down the road, which when you get to the end of a book, making changes on 150 pages takes a lot of time. So I learned that the hard way. So I have my panel set up on their own layer and then I've got my rough sketch here. And the reason that I letter my comic at this point is because I'm an independent comic creator. I do every step of the artwork myself. And if I letter at the beginning and there isn't enough room for the word balloons, uh, it's very easy to make a change at this point. So it's really easy to drag and drop something, scale something, move something, make a panel longer or taller or whatever needs to happen right now. Whereas if I waited all the way till I did final art, those changes would be a lot more difficult to make. Because I'm lettering it myself, it makes sense that I would just do it earlier in the process rather than later. So to bring this file into Comic Life in a way that I can use it, I'm going to save it as a JPEG. And I save it straight to my desktop so it's really easy to find. After I'm done working in Comic Life, I don't need this file, so I'll just throw it away. When you open comic life up you'll get this template chooser <laughs> and uh, I'm just gonna pick a blank page but once I'm in here you can change the size of your file to match the print size of your file so you can make a custom size anytime that you want even though they have got a bunch of presets in here already so they have some of their own preset comic paper sizes that you might want to use or a book size or just traditional print printer paper sizes here but I have set up my own particular sizes that match the widths of the page and the height that I need it to be so I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and now my page got much bigger but it's the size that I need it to match my JPEG so over here on this side window here, I just picked the Finder tab, and since I saved my page straight to my desktop, I can find it right there, and you just drag and drop. Now, it will show up small like this, but uh, it's, it's still full-sized. You just need to scale it. And we're just using this in here just as a placeholder. Uh, whenever we export our word balloons, we're going to delete this JPEG out of here anyways. Up under view you can turn on show pages and styles which will pop up on the left over here so if you have a multiple page document they'll be showing up in this left pages box and you also have this style document here for your word balloons and down at the bottom here you can find all of your different word balloon shapes to pick from I'm just gonna take a standard balloon this is unless I'm doing a caption I almost always typically just go for a standard balloon. Now to save yourself time from having to retype everything, you can just open up your comic script in Pages or Word or whatever program that it is that you use. And from here you can just highlight and copy your text and then come back into Comic Life and paste the text in there. Now it's not going to look good right away. So if you pull up your font window, highlight it, you can play around here until you find the font that you like, that's the right size, that works for your book when you export it, that's going to look good on print or on the web, whatever it is that you use. But once you know that, it's easy to repeat it every time because you know what size. For me, I do digital strip with their regular font and in a size 11 and uh, whenever you copy it sometimes it will less left justify depending on the program that you have it from so up here you can just pick center and center that in your balloon 
Now this is too thick of a line for me, so I'm going to go up to stroke and then just reduce it slightly to four. And you can zoom in if you want to zoom in closer. Now this is the part of comic life that um, works either really well or not very well. <laughs> and so it's sort of a balloon by balloon, panel by panel problem as you put the words in the balloon, it will automatically try to center them in this space for you. So as you change the balloon, how tall it is or whatever, it's automatically resizing in here. And that's one of the things that I love about the program is how easy it is to make changes that you're not constantly changing your bounding box and things like that. But sometimes it gets a little bit awkward in here and it might work better if you make one or two tweaks. So I'll go in here if something doesn't look quite right and I think maybe it could fit better. And then I'll put some of my own returns in manually. And when that happens, it usually resizes it pretty well to fit in that space. So when you're putting your text in the balloon, you want it to be in a diamond shape the best that you can so that it fills up that circular space as naturally as possible with as few dead spaces as possible. Now you don't need to re select your font size and um, the font name every single time or even the stroke on your balloon. Over here on the left is a styles window. So we can take this balloon that we just created and you can save a style right here. It has a check mark so you can see which balloon it is. That is your favorite way of making word balloons. So now when I create a new word balloon It'll automatically pop up in that style and if it doesn't then you can just click that style right there and it will format everything to match the way that you've saved it so this is just a big time saver sometimes if it's just a small balloon I won't uh, if it's just small text I won't copy and paste from my pages document Now I'm going to add an extension balloon here. This little balloon down here with the plus mark is an extension. You grab this and drag it up until you get that yellow circle around your balloon and it will add a second one connected to this one. So I'll just paste my text there and again you can see it's pasting the strange colors but when we go back here and click on our style it will automatically format it for us. It even does the center justification so we don't even need to worry about that. And then you can just do it again if you have another bit that you want to drop in. And this will format the whole thing. Now the downside to that is that uh, it I had this panel here in bold, but that's an easy fix to, to change. So you can grab the, the ends of your balloons and point them towards your character's mouths. <clears throat> but you also can change the curvature and the thickness depending on how and what you do with this anchor. And you can do a complicated tail if something's coming from around a corner. This is really customizable too. Because he's sort of interjecting, I don't want a soft curve, I want it to look like he's, his text is kind of darting out of his mouth, so I'll take the curve out of there and by breaking up his balloons a little bit like this then it seems more like he's stuttering. Now just looking at it right now I am assuming that when I go into Photoshop these two characters back here are covered, his head is covered by her word balloon so I will probably come in and grab them and drag them down a little bit either make them smaller or move them down a little bit so that they have a bit more breathing room from that balloon which is why you want to letter at this point. The downside to using the style button, just like I said before, is that you lose your formatting on italics and bold. So I just have to, if I notice over here that there's a word that's in italics, 
I need to just make sure I make that change myself. So right now I'm noticing a problem in this layout. It's not looking like I have much room at all to drop in this second word balloon that this character on the right is saying. So this is probably going to be a little bit of a problem. He's going to be overlapping our main character in the foreground, and that's, since he's the star of this page, it's not a great idea. Because this balloon in panel one is overlapping these characters' heads, and I was going to have to make a change anyways, I will probably go back into Photoshop and stretch these panels out and give them more breathing room at the top and the bottom and make that fix there because there's not very much lettering on the rest of the page. So I easily can cut into some of these other panels a little bit, still have plenty of room on them, but they're not going to feel cramped, but it's going to give these word balloons up here some some space to breathe. So I'm really glad that I did my lettering at this stage because if not, I, I would have been unhappy with the final art if it was covering up the, some of these key elements. And if you want to move along, you could copy and paste all of your text at the same time and, uh, and then come back in and do the formatting. Doing things in bulk just often speeds up the process. So these are my four remaining word balloons and I'll just format them all at the same time and then come back one at a time. So this is a voiceover. A character is talking to her from off camera. So I'm just going to cover up the tails of the word balloons. You, there's actually no way to delete them, but you can just take your balloon and pull it down so it overlaps with that tail and then it disappears. If you want to get it back, then you just grab it, drag it, and it reappears at any time. So just a quick note on lettering as I'm dropping these balloons in. Um, because you're le reading left to right, top to bottom, when I have a voiceover like this on a panel, I try to put the first one on the top left and the last one on the bottom right. And you can sort of stagger them throughout the panel a bit if that's what you, if you have multiple ones. Um, just make sure that it's reading left to right, top to bottom. And then once we get down here, a reader intuitively is going to know to jump back to the left and then work down to the bottom. So by staggering these panels like this, you're forcing a reader to read through the panel and notice the artwork in between. And on this panel here, number five, the blank sheet of paper, there's going to be important text on there that I drop in in Photoshop once I have the final art of the page. So by doing that, by spacing these voiceover word balloons in the places that I have, I'm forcing the reader to read through the page. They'll read the text on the piece of paper and then jump back to the voiceover and then they will jump down to this balloon, read through her expression, and then wind up on this final word balloon down there. So you want to be thinking through, the, through that sort of thing. Up here in panel two I do the same thing. I'm going to have one at the top and one at the bottom so that the reader is going to spend the time to go through the panel. If this word balloon, even though I don't have the space, but if I put it up here somewhere, um, <laughs> well, it got a little bit tangled up. Um, if I put it up here and, you know, we'll say that we have the extra panel space now that these guys can breathe with their dialogue, you jump from one to one and you instinctively are going to want to go down to the next panel. So by spacing the balloons apart from each other, you spend more time reading through his expression as he leans into the character in the foreground and really talks to him. And this is just, it, it reads a lot better. Your reader is going to spend a lot more time on this panel. And after you take the time to to make the art, uh, you want someone to notice it. And more than that, I think the magic of comics is that comics are stories that are told with words and pictures. And the wonderful thing about being both writer and artist is that you can decide whether a picture or a word tells your story better. Sometimes it's a little bit of both. But whatever it is, you want to make sure that that is not being overlooked by a reader just because you made a poor layout decision. So if an expression or a reaction is a key part of telling that story, there's no need to write it into the dialogue, but make sure that your art is actually able to convey the types of 
events and reactions and emotions and um, things, clues that you can hide in through a script. You want to make sure that all that is showcased and is evident. So as you can see on this page, there is a lot that is happening that has nothing to do with the dialogue, but it's just the art alone is sort of telling the story, especially we've got this strong reaction panel here. And in these two panels, the word balloons are coming from a character off screen. And the more important part of the story is what we're actually looking at than what we're hearing because she's not really paying attention to him. So it's supposed to be more in the distance and her reaction is the strongest point. So make sure that when you're creating your layouts, your layouts showcase that. Um, there's no need that we see her cousin's snarky comments to her when the whole point of the story is that she's about to make a very serious revelation. Well, I'm gonna save my document You can put it wherever it is that you'll, you will know where it is. And I always save it at this point so that if I make changes, all I need to do is make sure that there's a JPEG with this same name on the desktop and it will automatically load it into this document next time I open it. But I want to export just the word balloons. So I'm going to, without saving it, delete out that background image and then go up to export and I'm going to export to images. I'm going to pick JPEG and I'm going to make sure it's 300 DPI so it's a high res print quality and I'm going to save it straight to the, the desktop. Now in Photoshop I'm going to open up the panel with the word balloons. And at this point, I do a really quick once over. Again, uh, Comic Life isn't a perfect program when it comes to centering some things, and I did notice a few problems. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just go through this now during my rough stages, just to show you the, my entire process. But typically I don't put the final word balloons in until I've had a chance to drop in the final finished line art and make sure that I don't have any strange tangents happening at the last minute, but I want to show you this process. And centering it into these word balloon spaces I just want to make sure that it's in there perfectly and sometimes it's not always in there perfectly. Now to grab my word balloons because it is a flat JPEG image, I get my um, my magic wand and I set the tolerance high. I set it to 45 so that you don't get a white halo around the edges of the balloon. And then just select the inverse and copy it. Come back above your panels layer and paste your word balloons in. Now I'm going to make some really simple changes at this point. Just gonna make that panel longer. And under my rough sketch here, just gonna move all that artwork down a little bit. Now on that top panel, I've just got a little bit more breathing room to play with. And I'm going to reduce the art in this panel slightly so it's not overlapping the one character's head. Then I can come back here to my balloon slayer, grab this stuff and tweak it. Well, now I feel confident that I am ready to take my layout sketch and move on to final art. Everything's going to read in the right orders and my readers won't be confused. My artwork will stand out and everything is clear the way that it ought to be. So that's the way that I personally use Comic Life to letter my comic, The Dreamer, and hopefully you will find it helpful too. If you have any of your own Comic Life time-saving tips, Head on over to paperwingspodcast.com and leave us a comment on the blog. 
And while you're there, be sure to sign up for our Storytelling Tips newsletter.